The case of DE, which was decided last week, made legal history when for the first time the court authorised that it was lawful to perform a non-therapeutic sterilisation on a male patient. There had been previous cases in relation to female patients but never a male. The judgment which was made by Mrs Justice Eleanor King was in response to an application made by our client, the NHS Trust, as to whether or not it was lawful to perform the operation. It must be said that throughout the NHS Trust our client was entirely neutral as to whether or not it was in DE's best interests to have the procedure but it simply brought the case to the court to make its decision having received a referral from DE's GP. The case was highly unusual in many um, circumstances and one of which was that despite having a significant learning disability which meant that DE could not make the decision for himself as to whether to, or not to undergo a vasectomy, he had a long-standing girlfriend and in fact had a child by that relationship a couple of years prior to the hearing. The judge was at pains to point out that this was a very unusual and specific set of circumstances and would, would not necessarily be repeated across the country. It certainly should not be interpreted as a green light for a deluge of such applications and it seems highly unlikely that that will be the case. It was common ground by the end of the hearing that DE lacked capacity to make decisions to whether or not to undergo the operation but that he did have capacity to enter into sexual relations. Had that not been the case then a different outcome may well have ensued. The patient's rights and um, responsibilities were advocated by the official solicitor and there were various other parties involved. The final decision was made on a very specific analysis of what was right for this particular patient and what was in his best interests. It must be emphasised that cases such as this are very complex and difficult legally and also ethically. Any trust who has a similar situation would be very well advised to seek legal advice and if necessary make a similar application to the court. This is certainly not one of those decisions which can be made by clinicians on a best interest basis in accordance with section 5 of the Mental Capacity Act and the rules are very clear on this. This is a brief summary of the case and we are providing a further more detailed analysis of the legal and ethical issues arising out of the case in a training video that will be released over the next few days.